Hey everyone, forgive me if lighting is bad. I'm walking out the door here. Um, so I wanted to talk to you today about using your voice and your presence to persuade other people, to, uh, to listen to you and to uh, take your advice. So three things you gotta worry about when talking about people uh, that you wanna persuade or talking about how to, how to use your voice to persuade them. The first thing you gotta worry about is you have to worry about your breathing. So this is something that you can take from singing diaphragmatic breathing. A lot of people, uh, myself included if I'm not thinking about it, breathe from your chest. We breathe from our chests. So we breathe really shallow, we breathe up here at the top of our chest. We don't breathe from our stomach, your stomach, okay? So you have to breathe from your diaphragm. So you know how when you get punched in the stomach and all of a sudden you let all the air out of your stomach, you can feel your, um, your, your diaphragm or your, your belly expanding and contracting, that's where you need to breathe from. So listen to the difference in the quality of my voice. Now, right now I'm breathing out of my chest, I'm breathing really high. Now watch when I, when I breathe out of my stomach. So there are a lot of good exercises you can learn to, uh, to do diaphragmatic breathing, but the thing I would suggest is just putting your hand on your stomach, just like this, as you're talking. And if your stomach is expanding, that means you're breathing from your diaphragm or from your stomach, which is good. A lot of yoga uh, practitioners learn how to do this. It's very helpful. And it helps you to control your breathing better and to have more resonance in your voice, whether you're a male or a female. And of course, when you have more resonance in your voice, people are more enchanted by it. Another thing, speaking of enchantment, is you want to have some melody in your voice. So a lot of people are like, oh, these, these motivational speakers and these coaches and stuff, they're corny with the way that they talk, and I don't want to talk like that, blah, blah, blah. But if you notice, a lot of times, or even, even infomercial guys on TV, like they're talking to, to you, and you don't want to listen to them, but you can't stop. Why? It's because their voice is very melodic. And it's melodic, and it has cadence, and it has rhythm, and they have different intonations. So you notice how when I'm speaking, I can speak to you, and then I can bring it all the way down here. And you don't want to make it sound like you're, uh, I'm trying to get in the car here. You don't want to make it sound like you're all over the place, okay? But you want to have some sort of... Okay, I'm in the car now, but I wasn't done. When you're talking to people, make sure that your voice has a rhythm and a cadence to it, a melody. So if I'm talking to you, I'm not just talking to you monotonely. I'm not just speaking to you in one uniform voice. I'm speaking to you with a rhythm, and I'm speaking to you with intonation, and sometimes I can get gravelly if I want to, if I really want to emphasize something, or I can go really high up here when I want to talk like this. And you can use different intonation in your voice, and of course keep it natural to whatever um, suits you, but you can use different intonation in your voice to emphasize different points. A lot of people think that, oh, if I just speak down here, uh, people will listen to me more if I just have a strong, authoritative voice all the time. Well, I mean, that can be helpful, but it can also be boring, especially when you're speaking from stage or when you're speaking to someone on camera like I'm speaking to you right now, it's important. And if you'll notice, a lot of my, uh, my points are enunciated and they have rhythm and flow. It's almost like I'm singing a song to you, but I'm speaking. That's one thing about melody that you need. You need to have consistent melody. And that will keep people enchanted and wanting to listen to your videos or your voice or your speeches. Um, and it will keep people engaged. Uh, the last thing you want to use is you want to use the effective ellipse. Or I guess it's ellipses? El ellipse? The pause. The pause in your speech. So uh, there's a guy, and I used to watch him uh, when I was... Uh, like in the car with my, my grandpa or whatever on NPR or listen to him. His name is Paul Harvey. And he always speaks with these really interesting pauses at just the right moment when you want to know exactly what he's going to say next. He goes, and that's the rest of the story. And even though you know he says that line every time, that's like his little signature thing. Even though you know he says that line, I'm at a stoplight by the way. Even though you know he says that line, you're always like, oh, what's he gonna say next? Like, it's always like, oh, I'm hanging on the edge. So, you know how when you write an email, when you write in someone informally and you go, and dot, 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 and then you continue the next line afterwards? That dot, dot, dot draws people in. And the thing is, you want to place that ellipsis or that pause at, the, at a place that's not a particular period of the sentence. So, let me, let, me, let me play back to you Paul Harvey's thing again. And that's the rest of the story. Okay, that's one way to say it. So I think about a complete thought, and that's the rest of the story. Well, okay, I get the message, but I'm pretty much, I can, I can easily forget that. But if I go, and that's the rest of the story. Or, and that's the rest of the story. See how I can use pauses and ellipses 
to make you drawn into what I want to say to you. So when you combine diaphragmatic breathing, which is just breathing from your stomach, with melody and you're speaking with intonation and you have volume and you're speaking loud enough where people can hear you and you have, you have rhythm and cadence and you have the correct amount of pauses, people will automatically be drawn into you and they'll be lulled into what you say and you can communicate to them more effectively rather than just speaking, speaking, speaking and having it going right over your head. So I think those tips will help you with your videos. I think they'll help you with your, uh, with your speeches or with your communication. They can help you in school, in class, in work, uh, when you want to speak to people and communicate your message effectively. So have a great day, guys. I'm on my way to, uh, to go somewhere. Later. I always forget to say, um, if you want to find out uh, more about this type of stuff, you can visit my personal blog, danieldpiazza.com, or you, if you really want to start getting trained in this type of stuff and you want to start learning how you can take some of the skills that I teach you and actually turn them into information products and actually uh, create a business for yourself, then sign up on my website, rich20something.com. Both of these websites are in the information box below you. Later.